<coughs> We're rolling for when you're ready. How is the light? <laughs> How's it look, okay? Can we take one? Can we take <laughs> What would you most like to be remembered for? Oh, wow. We're all, I'm already uh, demised. I'm already gone. <laughs> uh, no, honestly, it's a good question. Um, and I had this conversation with a lot of people in the business and all that. Uh, basically, you know, as life goes on, as you get older, your values change and your point of, point of view changes and all that. I want to be remembered as a good person, period. A good human being. That's the most important thing, you know, to me. Mm -hmm. And that I have music as a vehicle to express myself and kind of share different points of view. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. But uh, every so, excuse me, every so often, I'm, I'm only human, like on this run, we've been We've been going really hard, you know, and I've, I've had very little rest. So as we all do, you got a little stress and you got a little jumpy and and you, I regret re letting life get to me, you know, situations and uh, and then you blow up. You, you got to let a little steam out, you know, and then you regret it because it's like we're all only people, you know, and, we're, and, and this is a people business and you have people you're traveling with and all that. And, you always want to make sure, for me, the most important thing is that I'm the, the best person I can be, the best human being, you know. To be uh, aware of my surroundings, the people I'm hanging out with, working with, and, and uh, what, what can I do to make such, any given situation better? That's what I live by, you know. Yeah, cool. So, cool. can you can I borrow 20 bucks? Because <laughs> <laughs> that would make it better. No, no but seriously, it's it's... That's after all's been said and done. When I've had like two, three, four months of running and running and running, you know, what sets my mind at ease is that I know in my own skin I'm the best I could. After the years and years that you've been playing and rocking out with different bands, uh, who sticks out to your mind as being the most influential? Uh, people I work with? Yeah, yeah. Oh, so many, man. Uh, right now, you know, we're doing this Thin Lizzy thing, uh, revival, if you will, because we're doing it again in a bigger way and much stronger and much together way. Uh, I get inspired, you know, the more I listen to, to Phil and the music and the catalog, um, I get inspired daily, you know, being on stage with the boys, it's, it's great. Before that, you know, working with people like Ted Nugent, he's... Regardless of what other people think, I know I'm one on one, and um, things might get misconstrued here and there. He's just one of those guys that has no problem telling you what he thinks and who he is, if you know what I mean. Yeah. With no filters, no dilution, because that's we, what we all do. We're all so concerned about being politically correct and yeah. can't step on those stoves, and the status quo is this, but you know. We don't have to be like that. So he inspires me to become a better person. So he's definitely a highlight. Uh, you know, drummers, people like Tommy Aldrich, who I, I've done so much work with, and, and he's a legendary drummer. He's amazing. There's only one Tommy Aldrich. He inspires me. You know, working for years with David Coverdale, he's such a, a great human being, too, and, and, and such an artist in everything he does. And the gift that he has with his singing, it's amazing, you know. So, right now I'm trying to get inspired with the players mm. I'm with, you know. Yeah. Um, I got some great players playing with me and uh, I, I try to plug into what's going on today, you know. In the past, gosh, the Beatles, you know, that was the first album I, uh, I ever got. I got it from Santa Claus, <laughs> Father, and um, <laughs> And that was the beginning of my musical endeavor, my musical journey, because yeah. I, I dug it so much and I could identify with it and I wanted to be like that and play songs and sing and and God only knows, you know, um, how I ended up here, but I'm here. <laughs> and um, so on and on, I mean, it's a, it's a loaded question because the way I look at life, things, and I, know, I don't mean to get too deep on you, yes. but uh, things inspire me, man. My kids inspire me, my daughter. I talk to my daughter and uh, she makes me cry, just the way she talks to me. She tells me, I love you, Papa, I miss you, you know? And my son, mm -hmm. who's 
uh, a bulldozer, uh, you know, destroying everything in sight and <laughs> climbing everything and breaking everything, and including himself. And and on top of that, in my family, my wife inspires me because she's such such a great human being and she's very strong. She's I tell her she's my pillar, you know. All I need to when when I get out out here and I'm you know on the road beating it up, man, and I get a little shaky and flaky, I talk to her and she. We pray together, and she puts everything in perspective. Yeah. So she inspires me. My father was a great inspiration to me. So, I mean, we could talk. We could have. This is a book. Who yeah. inspires you? <laughs> what What inspires you? Wow. Music inspires me. You know. So many the audience inspires you. Your fans inspire you. And on and on. This inspires me that that we're documenting this, and God only knows where it's going to end. Up, right? It's a trip, man. Today's media, it's a trip. But, uh, so, that's a loaded answer to a loaded question, I guess. If you could impart one piece of knowledge on an up-and-coming band uh, today, what would it be? Absolutely, don't let go. Just believe, you have to believe in what you're doing. And the first thing that people do by human beings is we just bring each other down. Pow! Pow! I, I, that's another book I could, you know, how many people discouraged me along the way in my career, you know? Thousands and thousands and thousands, you know? <laughs> so ab you absolutely know that who you are and what you want to achieve, and if you put the time in, you can get there. It's not going to be an easy road, especially now. You know, the industry has changed so much, and it's becoming yeah. harder and harder. But music is something that... Uh, you know, we can communicate with, and people always want to hear music. Why is it that the business, the industry, the record industry is bad, but bands are working? Why is it that, you know, I've been working harder than ever now, and they said the industry is going to die, there's not going to be... Gosh, we're playing in front of thousands and thousands and thousands of people, and it's like, what happened to those people that, you know, the skeptics? Without the labels, there's no industry wrong. Without the music, there's no industry, and the industry killed itself because it's all about greed and money, and everybody would want it more and more and more and more. Before you know it, it cancels itself. You know, when when you really uh, keep things in perspective, with for the up and coming bands, is record, write some songs, record, listen to it, and be open minded to what you need to improve. You know. Tempo's back here, the courts are here, maybe we try something here. It's, it's an ongoing process, you know, music is. Yeah, definitely. And to get to the point where this is what I want to sound like, this is who I am, and you own it, then everybody will start believing it. That's who you are. That's You own it. This is who I am. This is what I sound like. This is my singer. This is my drummer. This is my guitar player. This is who we are. Dig it. Or not. But, but you take that everywhere you go, and it's contagious, you know? And also, absolutely, absolutely, do the work, in my, in my opinion, do all the work, all the technical stuff, put the songs together, work on your, on your chops, on your, you know, your instrument, your singing, whatever it is that you're doing, and then um, forget it and have fun. Enjoy the ride. Indeed. If you enjoy the ride, you know, people will enjoy it with you. And uh, you don't have to be technically over the top. Music is contagious, you know. You have fun, people will have fun with you. Oh, wow. I, um, I was born in San Diego a few years ago, and then San Diego, California, a few years ago. And then, um, and then I grew up in Tijuana, which is a border town, Mexico. Uh, basically grew up bilingual, bicultural. We, we spent a lot of time in California, Southern California and, and Mexico, both. So it was pretty cool, man. I grew up with both cultures, uh, and I had a, a great uh, father. Uh, my mom and my dad divorced. My mom was a singer. So my grandmother came from Mexico to raise us, my, my dad's mom, and she was a piano teacher. So that's where everything came from. My father played clarinet. My grandmother was a piano teacher. My uncle was a piano player. My aunt plays piano, and brilliantly, I mean, really. Yeah. They could have very easily pursued it as a career, but they didn't. Yeah. So I owe all that, that musical stuff, at least appreciating music 
to my grandma, you know. And uh, piano was just too hard for me. It was too technical. They were going for the classical stuff. And it was just, you know, like, ah. So my, my brother got a guitar, and I started picking up the guitar, and that's where it came from. Like the usual, you know, you're going to school, you meet other friends that play too, and you put the garage band together, and, and you start spending more time than you'd like because you dig it. I found a friend, you know, my guitar. My guitar and me spent a lot of time together, you know, just goofing around learning songs. And I wasn't really a, a sports guy, actually, until later on in life I got into more physical stuff. But um, so, you know, this band, there's always better bands on top of you that have done it, been there, done it. And they have the transportation and the PA and they're doing the bigger gigs. So I got recruited by a band like that, you know, and so on and so forth. And that's how it is, you know. So that was my past. I passed, I, I came from a very loving place. I had people who loved me, but it was also very dysfunctional and it was freaky, you know. And I grew up uh, surrounded by alcoholism and drug abuse and all that too. And so I fell into that. And it took me a long time. If you put that, if you grow up in that environment and then you put music, the music business together with that, chances are. <laughs> Right? I mean, you don't have to be a rocket scientist. Chances are you're going to end up on that path. Well, it took me a long time, and I finally, I hit uh, some pretty bad bottoms, and I finally got sober, you know. And uh, and that's when I really began to experience life to the fullest. Mm -hmm. I, got, I got sober, I didn't play music for a little bit, and then I realized how much music meant to me, you know. The whole thing, I love the whole thing. I love the process of getting together with guys and goofing around and, okay, let's put a song together. Okay, cool. Now let's play in front of an audience. Okay, cool. Now let's record it. Let's, well, that sounds good. That sounds bad. It, it's just, I dig it, you know. It's almost like an escape from reality, isn't it? It is. It's my therapy. It became my therapy. Absolutely. It, and it's very therapeutic for me in that you can express, you can let a lot of your stress out, you know. Yeah. You can express emotions through music that you, that sometimes we find hard to do. Uh, you know, one-on-one, mm -hmm. uh, -on -one, uh, verbally. So, for me, yeah, I'm I'm pretty much addicted to that now. But, but the point was is that I got sober. Thank God I haven't had a drink, or a drug, or a smoke, or a pill, or anything like that. Anything that's mind-altering, for 24 years. You know, mm -hmm. so I got sober when I was 10. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and. Uh, it's also <clears throat> kind of got in the way in this business. In certain circles, I wasn't accepted because I was a sober geek, you know? Yeah. I said, I'm not a geek, man. I know how to enjoy life, and I can hang with the best. And I believe me when I say hang, I can hang. I just don't need any help because it's all natural anyway, you know? So, yeah, September 20th, you know, I got sober, 1987, 24 years. And uh, the best 24 years of my life, you know. Um, that's what happened. I got sober. I, got, I, I ended up in a lot of trouble with drugs and alcohol. I lost everything, including my sanity and uh, two marriages and kids and divorces and even the love and the passion for music. So that thing just engulfs you, just takes over of your whole life in every possible way. So I ended up there. And, and to this day, I choose to believe that it was divine intervention that I didn't die because I was there, man. So that's another thing that I try not to forget. That's why I'm here. I choose to believe that's one of the reasons why I'm still walking on, on the planet, man, is to carry the message, you know, however subtle or however strong it might be. I have people that approach me, you know, in the circles that I work in, and they need help. And they're approaching me and they're opening the doors because they need help. So then that's when I go, well, this is what it is, man. You have to do this. You have to stop this. This is how I did it, you know. And then there's other people that are just feeling it out. It says, wow, Marco, you're always happy, man. You know, you're, you're, in, you're in good shape for your age, you know, which is 40-something. And, um, uh, and you're very productive, you're busier than ever in your life, this style, you've got, you've got a loving family that loves you at home, your kids, your wife, sister, my brothers, the whole thing. What's the secret, you know? 
I said, what's up, man? And you always get up on stage and have a blast and you're buzzing and are you taking something, man? What is it? What is it? You know? I said, no, that is, I'm not taking anything, man. I try to work out, try to hit the gym, try to eat right, stay away from all the funky stuff that hurt us. That, you know, this is that one body that we have, man. We have to take care of it. And if we take care of our body, our body will take care of us, you know. I want to be around for a while. I'd like to be. I know it's in God's hands, but I'd like to be around because I, honestly, in the past five or six years, I feel that everything's peaking career-wise, musically, in every possible way. So the doors are finally opening up a little bit. It's like, oh, cool, man, I'm excited. Come on, let's go. Let's go find out what's the other side. So I would like to be around, you know. Yeah, so we've done past. Mm -hmm. uh, how about your present and your future? <clears throat> My present, I'm just, uh, in, I'm digging it. I'm digging it so much. Uh, I'm, if you could go and if we could put a camera inside me, you could see the little kid jumping up and down, just having a blast, you know, because I'm, <laughs> I'm that little kid that wanted to play music and I experienced music to the, to the max and here I am, you know, I'm doing it. I've learned to keep it inside under control so people don't think I'm freaky. But, <laughs> but I dig it and my kid comes out every so often, you know. And I see my children, Max and, and Faith, and I see myself in them so much. But uh, I'm just living the dream. Not to get wanky or whatever. Yeah. I am, absolutely. I, this is what I do for a living. I'm supporting my family. I've got five children that, are, that I'm very proud of, I love dearly. Uh, I'm healthy, we, we're healthy, we're traveling all over the world, I get off planes and I go meet musicians and we do music and we make a few bob there and and then we go do it again and it's like, wow, how cool, you know, so that's, my present is, couldn't be better, uh, I, I finish on the 23rd and the 24th, I'm off to Gatwick and they pick me up on the bus to meet up with the boys with Thin Lizzy in Holland and we awesome. start the Thin Lizzy thing supporting Judas Priest and Guns N' Roses and later on ZZ Top etc 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 and the most exciting thing with that thing that also I've been trying to keep my kid from busting out that I'm really excited about is that we're going to go into the studio you know <clears throat> we're going to go into the studio to represent today's you know fill in its freaking then this, yeah. you know, we're going to carry the flag into the next whatever years, you know. Yeah. And so we're all coming together and I'm excited. I'm really excited. So the future, I'm just looking forward to the next, the next thing, whatever that is, you know. Um, I'm always writing. I, I just wrote a couple of songs in Italy and uh, a couple of songs in Scandinavia and hanging out with musicians that I love, that I respect, that great players and we happen to be in the studio so let's record let's write something we got a couple hours here so that's that process is being handled and I think that's where I would like to be more now because I consider myself a very uh, uh, I'm, I'm a sophomore when it comes to songwriting you know because it's something that I really didn't do much of earlier in my career and I've collaborated with a lot of folks but to own your thing and to sing it, and it's like very cool. I love that. I yeah. really, really dig it. So I'm looking forward to doing more of that, hopefully. And, uh, incorpor and inc incorporating some of the, some, uh, some of the other styles that I, that I could put together. I did a little bit of that in Casa Mendoza, just a mascot release a few years ago. It's like fusion, Afro-Cuban beats with Brazilian grooves and blue sea lines and very melodic and uh, awesome, awesome, you know, polyrhythmic stuff, just fun stuff, you know. Obviously, it didn't do well because people weren't ready for that. They know me from the rock thing. But you have to do what you got to do, man. I never want to stop that. If money is the reason why I'm here, I'm, I'm not going to be a happy camper, you know. <clears throat> but uh, I'm just hoping that I get to do more writing and I get to play with some of the cats that, that I would love to share time with and the stage with and record with, you know. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping for the future. My musical guilty pleasure. Oh, there's so many. I, I'm still a, a big fan of Weather Report and, and players like Jaco Pastorius and Kerry Willis and Alain Caron, the fretless thing, you know. 
Uh, but I'll listen to some classical stuff too. Uh, if you was an alien and you were visiting planet Earth, uh, would you leave? Would you stay in hell mankind? Or would you try and conquer? No, I would probably stay in hell. Knowing me, I'd probably do that, yeah. Yeah, the conquering thing is not in me. <laughs> <laughs> it's in some people I know and it's good for them. It doesn't work for me. I'd probably get in there and try to help, you know. Try to share the message and uh, to be more tolerant with each other, to be more understanding and open-minded and yeah. loving and respectful and la la la, you know. And if we all had a little bit of that, of course this thing would be, we're getting deep now, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Peace and love, baby. Peace <laughs> and love. But it's true though, right? That's yeah, what it, it is. is. Yeah. Uh, do you believe in ghosts, UFOs and the paranormal? I believe I believe in the spirit world, yes. Ghosts, I think we've taken it to a little bit out of context, but I have conversations with family members, departed family members, and that, that's all I'm going to say. But I, uh, I'm very much aware of their presence, very much. And uh, can I ask for advice? And it's almost like they've moved on to another realm so they have the bigger picture, you know, and if you really listen hard enough, they can give you advice, what to do, where to go, kind of guide you, you know. And uh, so I believe, yeah, the possibilities are there. Ooh, UFOs. Sometimes I feel like, wow, how, uh, I don't know, you know. How ignorant can we be to think that we're the only ones yeah. in this whole freaking universe that, you know. But then uh, then I have the moments where, you know, uh, there's always that possibility. So, I don't know. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about that stuff. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I love the documentaries. I love anything that makes me think. That makes me go, hmm, they might have a point there. So those shows, when I watch, uh, you know, uh, paranormal stuff and uh, UFO documentaries, they make me think for a moment. But it, but then I move on, and it's like I don't spend a lot of time. I'm not yeah. really, you know, into it that heavy, you know. 